one of the very common way of representing a data set is using a matrix let's say, let's say how to represent it as you might already know a matrix is basically like a table right suppose if my data set d is collection of x i y i i going from 1 to n let's say x i belongs to r d and let's say y i belongs to let's say setosa virginica versicolor okay let's say this this representation we saw a while ago now let's put the same data in a matrix form okay there are again two two ways of representing it as a data matrix i'll pick one uh, i'll also show you the other way of representing so imagine if this is my data matrix and let's assume so what does this mean this means that my xi is a d-dimensional vector right which means i have d features what does this mean this means i have d features right i can have i can write my features as columns of my matrix f1 f2 f3 so on so forth fd right and i have n data points right i have first data point second data point third data point so on so forth n data points so this matrix is typically written as capital x which is n cross d each row here each row so the i row here i row here is nothing but your xi transpose right here i am representing each data point i am representing each data point as a row why did i write a transpose here because if i just wrote xi the default xi is always a column vector is always a column vector so xi transpose becomes a row vector right so if xi is a column vector right xi transpose which means swapping uh, which means basically converting your rows to columns and columns to rows is a row vector right now given this i'm representing uh, xi transpose is now a row vector of d dimensional space so each row here corresponds to one data point each column corresponds to one feature so if i have fj here this is my jth feature right this is one way of representing and each column and each column represents a feature or a variable this is one way of representing it in uh, uh, there is also exactly similar way of representing where let me show it to you where my x could be represented as this where each row represents my features f1 f2 f3 so on fj so on so forth fd okay and each of my data points could be represented as column vectors sorry i so on so forth n so this is a d cross n matrix and each of my points my ith point my ith point xi is here it's a column vector this is in this case each column represents a data point and each row represents each row represents a feature or a variable a feature or a variable so in this case your features your f1 could have been petal length your f2 could have been petal width your f3 could have been sepal length your f4 could have been petal sorry sepal width right so these are two representations and remember this x this new x that i have written is nothing but transpose of this if i just swap rows with columns columns with rows you'll get this matrix okay um, both of them are valid in lot of research papers you typically find this let me let me agree to that because this falls naturally right xi is a column vector by default so they just stack up all the column vectors to make to make a matrix like this um, when i studied uh, and during my experience i have used this format more as long as somebody tells you what each column and which each row is it's okay so i'll stick to this representation where each row is a data point and each column is a feature right this looks more like a table so for example i i prefer this because it looks more like a table there is no right or wrong approach as long as you specify what you're doing so i like that approach because i can think of it like a table i can think of my data as a table where each row so this could be my sepal length my sepal width right petal length and petal width my four features my f1 my f2 my f3 sorry my f3 and my f4 and each of these could be my flowers my first flower what is it sepal length sepal width petal length petal width my second flower so on so forth so this is this is the first format that i explained to you this format right where each of my data 
and it looks very similar to typical tabular representation of data right this is how you tabulate data right each row is typically a flower or a data point and each column is a feature so i prefer to use this notation where each row is a data point but a lot of research papers prefer to use this it's perfectly okay to use any of them but we will stick to this because uh, because i'm just more used to it and it feels more natural especially when you're tabulating data right so there is one more question okay you explain how to represent your x but what about y of course i can represent y as a column vector here right as vector y what is the length of the y so this is a column vector right which means it has it has n rows and one column and the ith row so this is my first row second row so on my ith row so on so forth nth row because there are, for each data point i have a yi which says whether the flower is setosa virginica or versicolor so here i'll have my yi corresponding to my x i row this is important corresponding to my x i row i'll have my y i okay this is how we can represent data where x i can be written as a matrix uh, where where x i's can be uh, all x i's can be concatenated or clumped together to form a matrix like this where each row is a data point each column is a feature and my y could be just one column of data where y a corresponding to the corresponding to each x i there is a y a which represents what is the class label right and this is what we'll stick to we'll use this extensively we'll use this matrix x we'll use this this is matrix x right we'll use this matrix x, matrix extensively in the next few lectures